Hey YouTubers, this is Matt Kramer, and I've been wanting to do this video for a while, for a while, um, and now I get the chance to do so. So this will be what I call a critique of the captains. I'm not sure if this has actually been done before uh, in the style that I want to do it, and I hope I don't take take too long uh, because I have an angel game to go to in about an hour. Uh, actually, I can leave here. I, yeah, uh, 20 minutes. I can leave here in 20 minutes or so. So I'm going to make this as quick as possible. But I also want to be able to be as concise as I can be and be specific. So this is a critique of all the major Star Trek captains, um, excluding, of course, uh, Captain Pike or Captain uh, Giorgio from Discovery. Uh, I, I just want to look at Captain, uh, Captain Kirk, uh, uh, Captain Archer first, Kirk, Picard, Cisco, and Janeway uh, in that order. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to share my screen. And I'm going to share my screen. And on the screen, you see uh, one, two, three, four, for five tabs, five tabs, and what I want to actually, I can go to memory alpha for all of these. So let me do that right now memory alpha or fandom, and I can do that. So let's start with Captain Jonathan Archer, played by um, Scott Bakula. Actor Scott Bakula. Um, I, I I'm gonna say this. I respect um, um, Scott here, as you see. That's Scott Bakula. That's Captain Jonathan Archer. Uh, I respect him in um, was NCIS New Orleans. I like I like him in that show. Although. Um, and I hope you guys, you fa fellow fans, don't take this the wrong way. But in my observation, there's a certain type of training that all these actors go through that I'm going to do uh, that is very different from one another. But also there's some, in my opinion, similarities. Uh, for Jonathan, uh, for Scott, I should say, uh, he was raised, let's see, let's go to... Let's go to Scott Bakula here. Uh, Scott was born in, who was he born in? He was born in St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, he, blah, blah, blah. He did plays, University of Kansas. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I really don't know. Okay, here we go. He did some TV stuff. But there, the acting um, coach or the acting director, the acting teacher, the drama teacher that he had, I don't know who he was or who she was, but if you watch Scott Bakula, there's a head movement that he does. That he does in everything, that he, every show or every movie that he does. Uh, and that was and his, the way he gave his lines. We're a little, when I first watched Enterprise, um, it was a little too weird, if you know what I mean. It's a little too weird. Uh, so, but that that is the training that he had, and he's a musician, which is kind of cool, too. Uh, Scott, Scott is a musician. He's a jazz musician. Plays piano, and I think he plays another instrument as well. Uh, but this is Jonathan Archer. He was um, really the first captain of the Enterprise, period, uh, when Discovery came out uh, um, in the first uh, episode, which was Broken Bow, I think it was. And um, and he and uh, and this is before the United Federation of Planets was founded. 
uh, is it used to be called the Coalition of Planets, I believe. And then it became the United Federation of Planets. Uh, so he was pretty much the first captain of the Enterprise period, uh, just after uh, Zephyr and Cochrane created his warp, warp ship uh, called the Phoenix uh, back in 20, 2050, 2063, I believe it was. Uh, I should say forward in time. Um, but that's Jonathan, that's Jonathan Archer, that is Scott Bakula. So for Scott, my opinion of him is good, but a little weird in the way that he composed himself as Captain Archer, the, the way he gave his lines and the way he moved about as his character. And I hope that makes sense. For James T. Kirk, um, who is played by this great 90-year-old uh, <laughs> William Shatner. Um, 90 years old. Congratulations on that milestone, first of all. Second of all, um, if you know, uh, what's his name? This guy that impersonates him so much. Um, Kevin Pollack. Uh, he and almost every fan of Star Trek would say that Mr. Shatner is the master of overacting for no apparent reason. That's Kevin Pollack saying that. And he's famous for what's called mockingly, probably mockingly called pause acting. Um, I, I cannot watch. I, I tried to watch a full episode of the original series, and I cannot. I cannot. Um, what saved the series for the three years, 1966 to 69, was the fan base, number one. But number two, I believe one of the things that saved the franchise was Leonard Nimoy's character, Mr. Spock. Uh, he's one of the way, one of the people that saved uh, Star Trek and made it able to grow. Uh, Nisha Nichols was also very... Um, big part of that with her conversation with Dr. Martin Luther King back in the 60s. And there's a story about that. It's a very cool story. Um, but for me, um, <clears throat> it wasn't really Bill Shatner's acting that saved Star Trek. It was Spock, uh, Leonard Nimoy. It was James Doohan, who played Scott, the original Scotty, which uh, inspired people to become engineers, uh, inspired people to become astronauts. And same thing with DeForest Kelly as Dr. McCoy. People were inspired to enter the medical field due to um, DeForest uh, D. Kelly's uh, role as Dr. McCoy and probably Dr. Beverly Crusher from Next Generation inspired a lot of women to enter the, the medical field as well. Uh, so Bill Shatner's side, no offense, it was Spock, it was Leonard Nimoy, it was uh, Scotty, it was DeForest Kelly and Uhura that saved Star Trek along with, in my opinion, the fan base. Of course, that story tells. Um, <clears throat> the fan base of 1966-69. But we moved up to 1987, and we moved to Sir Patrick Stewart, who's 80 years old now. Um, another great milestone for him. Um, he was the first, he and his crew, the USS Enterprise D, uh, were the crew that I watched after school. Uh, whenever they were on back in the early to mid 90s. Um, and I've watched Sir Patrick Stewart for close to 30 years, from Star Trek to X Men to now uh, Blunt Talk, a very short lived series, but uh, and now Star Trek Picard. Uh, I'm very, very anxious to see what they do with 
uh, season two, and I I know that John Delancey is coming back as Q. That will be really really exciting. And also, Whoopi Goldberg as Guinan is coming back for the second season as well. So we'll see what the second season holds for us uh, for Sergeant Picard. But I th- I think it's going to be as successful, if not more so, than the first season. The first season was really really good. Uh, to have Brent Spiner back. Uh, in Star Trek Picard was really, really cool. Um, hopefully we get to see more characters as more seasons are green lit. Um, so kudos to pa- uh, Patrick Stewart, Jonathan Frakes, Michael Dorn, LeVar Burton, who I also watched on Reading Rainbow back in the 90s. Uh, kudos to all you guys. Uh, keep up the good work. Now, this guy, Benjamin Sisko, Avery Brooks, I'm going to say that his way of giving his lines, and he's also a musician, by the way, he, his way of giving his dialogue from the script is similar, in my opinion, similar to Jonathan Archer or Scott Bakula. Very, very similar. The cadence is different than Picard, but it's more sim- and it's different than James T. Kirk, uh, Bill Shatner, but it's very similar, in my opinion, to Scott Bakula. That's my opinion. You don't have to agree with that, but that's my opinion. Ben Sisko, Avery Brooks, also a jazz musician, piano. Piano guy, I'm a piano guy. Scott Bakula is a piano guy. Uh, very similar to, in my opinion, Jonathan Archer, Scott Bakula. So if you don't see that, that's okay. Uh, if you see something else about Avery Brooks that's similar to Scott or dissimilar to Scott Bakula, cool. But in my opinion, you listen carefully to the cadence of Avery Brooks, and the cadence of uh, Scott Bakula, and it may be similar. I don't want to say that James Kirk is similar to Jonathan Hurtch. I don't want to say that, because I don't think that's true. I may be incorrect, but Ben Sisko is totally different than Picard. And here's, here's one reason why, in my opinion. Patrick Stewart, if you know his story, uh, his father was in, in the British military back in World War II. Um, and, or World War I, excuse me. Um, so, or maybe it was World War II. Let's see. His father, let's see, Patrick Stewart. I want to get that right. I think it's World War I, not 1918. No. No, it, it's World War II. Just make sure. Uh, yeah, his his father served in the British Army uh, during World War II. I want to make make sure I get that correct. But Patrick Stewart, as you know, is from the old Brit, uh, old Vic Theater School in London. He was part of the great uh, Shakespearean Royal Shakespeare Company. Uh, that is totally different than James D. Kirk, who is a method actor, uh, William Shatner, who is a method actor, and that's different than Jonathan Archer, Scott Bakula. That's way different, way different. So the training is there, but his military background, not his military, but the family's military background, and him and Patrick going through the parental abuse that he saw he witnessed by his dad that could have made him into the person that we know him today for the last close to 50 years if not more so that experience alone makes him more militaristic more uh, firm and stern in his commanding presence than say James C. Kirk or Jonathan Archer. That's my opinion. 
I hope you see that. If you don't, that's okay. And of course, it's way dissimilar to Avery Brooks. Now, let's go to Catherine Janeway. Kate Mulgrew. Who is she similar to? She's similar to Captain Picard, in my opinion. Ca Captain Janeway, the first female captain of any ship in Star Trek. It's very, her command presence, her command structure, um, uh, not, well, structure is not the right word, but her command persona, in my opinion, is very similar to Patrick Stewart. And let me give you uh, a younger, well, here's, here's Patrick Stewart. It's that guy. Very similar command presence, very similar command, um, the, um, there's a word I'm looking for, I can't think of it, but the way that she gives her lines, the cat, Kate Mulgrew gives her lines, it's very similar to Patrick Stewart, and if, I hope you guys see that, I hope you agree with that. Uh, there's... <laughs> Laughing. Let's see. There's a more serious picture of Patrick here. Uh, blah blah blah. Yeah, that's that's better. So that's what I see. That's what I see, and that is Sal Mitchell, Alan Bernard. Okay, that was for the last episode. All good things. Um. So that's Patrick Stewart. Let's go back. So Jonathan Archer, let's review this again real quick. Jonathan Archer is similar to De um, Benjamin Sisko. James C. Kirk is a person is a captain all his own. Again, he's called the master of over acting for no apparent reason and the master of Paul's acting according to Kevin Pollock, and he might be right. I know that Kevin Pollock is just a comedian and impersonator, but I think I honestly think he's really correct in reality. Um, ben Sisko, okay, and Catherine Janeway is very similar in command, presence, and performance, very similar to Captain John Picard. And that's basically it. I, I, I want to get this video out of the way. Uh, and allow you guys to hear my position of Star Trek captains. Jonathan Archer, Scott Bakula, James C. Kirk, William Shatner, Jean Le Picard, Sir Patrick Stewart, Benjamin Sisko, Avery Brooks, and Kate Mulgrew as Catherine Janeway. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If, if you did, give a like, subscribe to the channel. I have 118 subscribers right now that is awesome um <clears throat> uh let's see comment any uh any any comments that you want to give please give them uh this will not be uploaded this this won't be uploaded till probably tom tonight late tonight or tomorrow uh but i'll make sure that i have this video for you guys i i hope you enjoyed this little critique of the Star, Star Trek captains. Again, I take out Chris, uh, Christopher Pike uh, in, this, in this video, but I want to say Anson Mount is really good as Captain Christopher Pike and Bruce Greenwood, who was in the movies, uh, the Kelvin Time Run movies with Chris Pine, Loved him too. He was really, really good. Jeffrey Hunter, rest in peace. I, everyone knows he played Jesus in one of the Jesus movies back in the 60s, I think it was, or 70s. He, he might have been a successful Captain Pike. I do know that he uh, reprised the role twice or once or twice in the original series. But in 66, the ABC network said, or NBC network said, 
it, it's not going to work. So they fired everyone except for uh, Leonard Nimoy, and they brought in Bill Shatner as Captain James T. Kirk. Um, we'll see. Um, Sergeant Discovery Season 4 is coming out hopefully very soon. Start, uh, Star Trek Picard Season 2 is coming out next year. Very excited about that. Um, uh, Kate Mulgrew is reprising her role as Janeway in Lower Decks, which I don't honestly watch. The Star Trek Lower Decks. I don't watch that, that cartoon one. I don't. Um, although Q has appeared on that show as well. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Not, not Kate Mulgrew. Kate Mulgrew is doing Star Trek Prodigy. John Delancey is, is doing a Q for Lower Decks. Uh, but anyway, I hope there's more interaction between uh, John of the Card and hopefully, if they can do this, they can bring back Captain Sisko from the Celestial Temple, not just as they did in the books, but in real life. Because at last, according to the TV series, he's still up there in the wormhole. And I'm sure he's, his family wants him to come back. But anyway, this is a critique of the Star Wars, Star Trek captains, Jonathan Archer, James C. Kirk, Jean Le Picard, Ben Sisko, and Catherine Janeway. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe to the channel, comment your opinions on uh, this video, and that will be greatly appreciated. Go Angels. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Uh, Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, there it is.